Hey everybody, I'm Paul. Welcome back to A to Zoysia. Today we're going to talk about something that I think we can put down on the lawn right now. Uh, since it's a little too early for actual fertilizer on warm season turf. And that would be humic acid. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how humic is beneficial for your plants and your soil. If you want to know what humic acid is, it is uh, an ancient deposit of decomposed organic matter that is basically mined and once it's mined it's reacted with a high pH solution to get it into a liquid form. Um, that solution is known as humic acid and here are the benefits of what it can do for you. Humic acid has many benefits including um, it increases nutrient uptake, it also increases water holding capacity, it improves your overall soil structure, it stimulates microbial activity, it can help regulate pH, uh, it improves your overall plant health, it stimulates root growth, it just stimulates growth in general, it uh, is known for decreasing toxins and it can help release locked up or bound up nutrients in your soil due to pH problems or imbalances in nutrients in the soil. With the increased efficiency that humic acid provides in the soil and its ability to retain and provide nutrients to the plant makes it so that you have to put or you can put less fertilizer on your yard and still achieve the same rate of effectiveness as higher rates of fertilizer or more fertilizer in general. So your roots have a positive ionic charge and humic acid has a negative charge. Opposites attract. So what happens is the negative charge of the humic acid will um, attract positive ions from the soil like calcium and iron and it'll bind them and that's what's called the cation exchange capacity and the cation exchange capacity or CEC for short if you've ever heard of uh, someone say CEC the definition of that is your soils capacity to retain nutrients and it's really important. Um, the more organic matter you can put into your soil, the higher your CEC will be. So typically clay soils will have a higher CEC than sandy soils. Sandy soils are real porous and allow nutrients and water to drain right through and leach um, out where clay soils are more dense and have very fine particles and will hold uh, these nutrients and moisture uh, much easier. Here's a few things that we're going to need to calibrate your sprayer. We're going to need your sprayer, a little bit of water to put in there. We're going to need a stopwatch as well as a container or a measuring device to measure how much your sprayer is putting out. We're going to put a couple gallons of water in the sprayer to <clears throat> make sure we have enough to do the test. Probably just need a gallon or less. But I'm going to fill it up anyway to spray, so putting a little more in there is not going to hurt anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray until we get 32 ounces of water in our beacon. And we'll multiply that time by four. That should be the amount of time that it takes to spray out one gallon. That one gallon should cover 1,000 square feet. So whatever your time is, is how long you have to spray one gallon over 1,000 square feet. What I suggest is that you walk 1,000 square feet and spray water a few times and get a feel for the speed. And keep in mind you're overlapping. You really don't want to overlap. You just want to hit edge to edge. 
Uh, that way you don't over apply whatever it is you're putting out that day. Just making sure everything's clear and the lines are flushed out, which they are. So we're getting ready to do the test. Thirty one seconds. A really good tip is to do this three times and take the average. Thirty point three eight. Twenty nine point six seven. So I would just be uh, safe to say that thirty seconds is what it takes to spray out 32 ounces. So I'm really at two minutes per thousand. 30 times four is two minutes. Two minutes per thousand square feet. I have two minutes to walk that thousand square feet. Your spray tip will also determine how much your sprayer will pump. A fine mist sprayer may put out a lot less volume than an air inducted red T-Jet. The Air inducted red T jet puts out a much larger droplet size, which gets your chemical down to the soil level faster. If you were doing a foliar app, you would want to do a very fine mist so that the fine mist lands on your foliage and is absorbed into the plant that way. We're going to take a look at this tip and the spray pattern. It appears that this spray pattern is three and a half to four feet. Now that we know how long it takes to spray a gallon of water out, we also know each pass will cover roughly four feet. Now we can walk it off and see how comfortable I am and what pace I need to walk to get this product out at one gallon per thousand square feet. So I found a nice spot here and measured out a thousand square feet. It happens to be 25 feet across and I know 25 times 40 is a thousand so I measured 40 uh, feet that way and marked it off with the orange flags here. We're going to walk it off and it should take me two minutes to put out one gallon of product already mixed and that will give me an idea of my pace that I need to walk. and. Uh, that way we'll be really comfortable when we do a fly. Two minutes. So I had 35 seconds to spare. I'm going to do this again at a slower pace. You don't have to watch this time, but this is just for my benefit. Walking it with a slower pace, and we're going to make sure we get out the right amount. That way I'm not wasting product, nor am I putting too much or too little. I'm not sure if you can see the spray pattern, but it is a flat fan. I don't remember how many degrees this is, 180 degrees I think. But uh, it's a heavy, heavy dropper. So applying Humic 12, which is made by Green County Fertilizer, is one of their next products. Next being nitrogen extension, nitrogen extending N EXT. Uh, their label rate is three to nine ounces per thousand square feet. I'm not exactly sure how much I have left, but I will measure it out and let you know. I also have a soil penetrant called Easy Wet. And that goes out, I think, at three ounces per thousand square feet for compacted soils. And the reason I'm putting that out is because I put the X soil out and lime, and we're expecting 
a decent amount of rain in the next 24 hours as well as two to three rainfalls this week and I want to make sure that whatever rain we get pushes this material into the ground. <clears throat> I don't care about the humic being pushed into the ground because rainwater itself will push that in. But some of these heavier solids I want to get pushed in, especially the egg soil that has the biochar and the co-composted chicken manure. I want to make sure that is working into the soil profile as well as the lime that I put down. Lime is kind of slow moving through the soil. Um, but I did buy an enhanced lime, which is uh, very finely ground, and it does work its way into the soil pretty quickly compared to standard pelletized lime. So we're going to mix this up and see what we have. Always, we do want to shake these up and get the solids mixed in and get it reconstituted. I got a couple drops on the cement and humic acid does stain. It is temporary, it will eventually wash away, but it will stain it black like used motor oil. Another important thing to consider when you're mixing humic products is to fill your tank halfway with water before you apply the product. That way it's incorporated with the water and if there are any other humic products mixed in, it doesn't cause it to fall out of solution and uh, then you're left with a clumpy mess. So mix it with water first, incorporate it, and then I'm going to apply RGS. I believe it's safe to apply these two products together and uh, then we'll put this out in the yard. For those of you who do not know what RGS is, it is uh, called Root Growth Stimulant. It is a biostimulant, which um, pretty much about half of their products are biostimulants. Uh, if it contains humic acid, it's going to be considered a biostimulant, in my opinion. Um, it does not have NPK in it, so it has 6% humic acid, 3% sea kelp. Sea kelp in nature has a lot of growth hormones in it, so they harvest the sea kelp and they dry it and they extract the, I guess the hormones out of it for lack of a better term, and you can apply it to anything that's growing and it will stimulate growth, it will stimulate root growth, roots and shoots. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this in.
just to recap, you really can't overdo the Humix. Technically you could, but it's highly unlikely that you will. Um, you can go anywhere in the range that they give you. I like to normally go on the higher range because the more I can get in the ground, the faster that I'll see the effects. And this humic should bind uh, and stay in the soil, I should say, for a very long period of time and benefit um, my roots, my shoots, my plants, everything that I have and help it with nutrient absorption holding these nutrients and minerals in the soil um, creating a higher CEC value retaining moisture releasing it when it needs to activating microbes uh, the list goes on and on so with the added benefits of humic acid with good cultural practices and a quality fertilizer program you can really achieve much higher quality turf than without. We're gonna cover some of this stuff later this season. And right now I wanted to get to um, a piece of mail I got from a, another YouTuber. And it's Jimmy Lewis from Jimmy Lewis Mose. I will put his uh, channel link in the description of the video. And he left me a note. Um, thank you for your service to this great country. Best of luck this year with the lawn, Jimmy Lewis. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate it. And what's really cool is he gave me a card. I don't know if you can see that. With links to his social media as well as a really, really cool sticker I'll put this sticker on something I don't know what yet I have several um, but Jimmy you're the first youtuber that has sent me a sticker for your channel I appreciate it and I can't wait to see what you've got going on this year so guys I'll see you next time if you have any questions please ask in the comments leave a comment tell me what you're growing this year what your plan is don't forget to subscribe Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new content. And I'm really excited to get on this zoysia this year. I'm just waiting for it to wake up. And it is starting to wake up. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.